Hi, I'm Brenton, one of our MCAT tutors here at Inspira Advantage, where we help students get into med school and other professional programs. Today, we're going to talk about the innate immune system. The innate immune system is the first line of defense against pathogens, and it provides a rapid, nonspecific response. It is made up of physical and chemical barriers, such as the skin and mucus, as well as cells like neutrophils, macrophages, and natural killer cells. In this video, we will be discussing the various components and mechanisms of the innate immune system and how they work together to protect the body from pathogens. The first line of defense of the innate immune system is the skin. The skin is an important physical barrier, as well as provides a barrier. The skin is an important physical barrier. The mucous membranes in the respiratory, gastrointestinal, and the mucous membranes in the respiratory and gastrointestinal tract provide a physical barrier to pathogens. Additionally, mucus and other secretions from the tears and sweat contain enzymes and other molecules that can inhibit the growth of pathogens. These types of enzymes are called lysozymes. Another important component of the innate immune system is the complement system, a group of proteins that circulate in the blood and can be activated to enhance the ability of other immune cells to clear pathogens. The complement system can be activated through various pathways, such as classical pathway, the lectin pathway, and an alternate pathway. Once activated, the complement system can create a cascade of events that leads to the lysis of pathogens by punching holes in their cell wall, as well as attracting immune cells to the site of infection. Next, we have neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. These are all types of white blood cells that play different roles in the immune system. Neutrophils are the most common type of white blood cell. They're responsible for fighting off bacterial and fungal infections. They do this by engulfing and digesting proteins through a process called phagocytosis. Once inside the neutrophil, the pathogens are killed by an enzyme and reactive oxygen species. Neutrophils also release chemical signals that help recruit other immune cells to the site of infection. Next, we have eosinophils. These are another type of white blood cell primarily involved in the immune response to parasitic infections and in allergic reactions. They release chemical mediators such as histamine, which helps to dilate blood vessels and increase blood flow to the site of infection. They also release enzymes which can break down the cell walls of parasites and cytotoxic proteins that can kill certain types of parasites and even cancer cells. Next, we have basophils. These are the least common type of white blood cell. They're involved in the immune response to parasitic infections and also in allergic reactions. They release chemical mediators such as histamine, heparin, and leukotrienes, which can cause inflammation and in the dilation of blood vessels. Basophils primarily react to allergens and cause a decrease in blood clotting. Next up, we have macrophages. These are a type of white blood cell that play a key role in both the innate and adaptive immune response. They are part of the mononuclear phagocyte system, which also include dendritic cells. Macrophages are highly mobile and can move through the body to reach sites of infection or injury. Once there, they engulf and digest invading pathogens through a process called phagocytosis, basically eating the invader. They also release chemical signals called cytokines that help to recruit other immune cells to the site of infection. Macrophages also play a role in the presentation of antigens to T lymphocytes, which is a key step in the adaptive immune response. They do this by using molecules called major histocompatibility, called major histocompatibility complexes or MHC complexes. MHC1 molecules are found on the surface of all nucleated cells. They present viral antigens and cancer, cancer antigens to CD8 plus T lymphocytes, which are cytotoxic C T cells. Cytotoxic T cells are specialized T cells that can directly target and eliminate infected cells by releasing cytotoxic molecules and triggering apoptosis. MHC2 molecules, on the other hand, are found primarily on the surface of antigen presenting cells, such as macrophages and dendritic cells. They present antigens from extracellular pathogens like bacteria and fungi to CD4 plus T lymphocytes, which are also known as T helper cells. T helper cells coordinate the immune response by releasing cytokines and activating other immune cells. The innate immune system also includes a variety of other cells, such as dendritic cells and natural killer cells. Dendritic cells are specialized antigen-presenting cells that can capture antigens and present them to T cells. Natural killer cells are particularly important for fighting against viral infections and cancer by releasing cytotoxic molecules and triggering apoptosis. They can also release cytokines to help recruit other immune cells to the site of infection. Natural killer cells are activated by a variety of signals, including the presence of infection or cancer, as well as the absence of MHC class one molecules on the surface of cells. Basically, if it doesn't see an MHC one antigen, it's gonna just kill the cell. In summary, the innate immune system is a complex network of physical and chemical barriers, cells and molecules that work together to protect the body from pathogens. 
the innate immune system can respond quickly and non-specifically to a wide range of pathogens and provides the first line of defense against infection. Understanding these mechanisms and cell types is very important for the MCAT. Focus on what type of pathogens these cells target. Thank you so much for watching our video on the innate immune system, and I'll see you next time.